What's going on everybody? King of Dragons 5000 here, once again coming at you with another figure review. Today we'll be having a look at the Bandai Tamashii Nation's D-Arts War Greymon from Digimon. Now I'm really excited I have this guy. I just finished watching the first season of Digimon and I just, he went on sale, picked him up, had to do it. On the side we have a nice image of War Greymon. Speaking of which, here he is in the packaging. You can see his Nova Force. Lovely image of War Greymon on the side. Nothing on this side. It says D Arts at the top. On the back we have images of War Greymon. You can see him holding the Nova Force and just some posing you can get him into. So overall, really looking forward to this guy. What I'm going to do now is take a little break, get him open up, and we'll go on to the rest of his review. So sit tight, everyone. And so here we have War Greymon posing out of the packaging. Now let's get a good 360 of this guy. Really nice looking figure. He has a lot of things going for him and a couple of things I wish were a little bit different on him. And we'll get more into that later on. Actually, I'll point that out right now is, although as much as I like his claws, I really wish they didn't go with this chrome paint that they that they have on them. Let's actually see if I can't zoom in on that. His claws are very chromed out and although that looks nice and there's a little hair on him, I don't like it. Only because it's gonna chip really easy and once it starts chipping it's not it's really, really hard to like make it look nice so I don't. I wish they had gone with like a metallic silver rather than chrome, cause that it just takes one scratch and it's gonna be like, oh man, now I have to find a replacement for that. And I can imagine that a replacement part for him is not going to be cheap. He doesn't really come with too many accessories. He does come with his Drummon Destroyer gauntlets that you see him wearing right now. Uh, he also did come with his Nova Force, which if I can pull that aside, it's right here. And let's actually go on to detail for his Nova Force. Really, really nice design on it. It's metallic paint, I believe. It's just a metallic paint job that it does, but you can see some highlights of red and orange in there. So really nice and... If you're wondering how he holds it, it's really simple. You you have some tabs right here. You have one tab here, one tab here, and those are let's see if I can't be careful with this. So I can show you. There is a little slot in between his the top claw right here, and what you're gonna do is just slide that in like so. And once it's in there, he's gonna hold it. Although he has a lot of weight on his wrist already so you can see it's already dropping now but good thing it's not the actual wrist joint it's just the way his gauntlet sits on the peg might be a little loose I'll just have to check that out but yeah you can just tab it in on both sides and it came loose on this side so we'll just tab it back in there we go he's holding it and then we'll zoom the camera out so you can see him holding the Nova Force. Or his Terra Force, Gaia Force, I don't remember. It it's different from the an from the English anime and the Japanese anime. But I think it was a Nova Force. I I'm probably wrong uh, on it and I just finished watching it, but it does fall out really easy, so that's something to be aware of. Let's actually go on to some of his details right now. He looks a lot like he does in the anime, which is a really good thing. You can see you can his eye is painted wonderfully. That's the same for both sides. Although there is a white dot right there that isn't supposed to be there. But it's not really noticeable from a distance, so you're not going to be bothered by it. His little mane that comes out. Really nice armor. You can see they even painted inside his panel lining. Once again, the 
dragon claws or the Dremon destroyer gauntlets. He also does have the brave shield, which is painted wonderfully. If you were to be able to close it up, it would make the full thing, but it's supposed to go like this, so yeah. And then his greaves are also nicely done. Painted it well for the most part. I can't see too any major flaws that would make me go, oh no, I don't want that. And it's the same for both. It's painted wonderfully. And then you can see his big feet with those nice yellow, or er, white claws, excuse me. But yeah, really nice figure. I'm really glad I picked him up. Let's zoom the camera back out. And unfortunately, he doesn't come with any other accessories besides the Nova Force. I would have liked it if they included a stand, you know, so you could get him to do the Great Tornado or the... Is it the Great Tornado? The Cyclone that he does that he tore Metal Seedramon apart. But he still has a lot, of, a lot of nice articulation going for him. And let's actually show that off. He has a ball jointed head. He can look down and up slightly. He spins left and right. And then he has a joint in the neck, although I'm not sure what type of joint it is. It might be a ball peg, it might just be a hinge, but you do get some play with it, not a lot, so he is going to be fairly limited in being able to look up and down. But it's there. His shoulder pads are on a hinge joint, so they go up and down, independent of his arm. And it does become cumbersome at some point points because you're going to want to display his arm going further up than that, but unfortunately his arms can't. But his arms are on this ball socket so you can have it go back and forth. It might actually be a butterfly joint. Um, yeah, it's a butterfly joint. He has a butterfly joint that... No, it's not a ball joint. The butterfly joint swivels back and forth, giving him inward and outward movement. He also is ball jointed in the shoulder, so he has a lot of range there. A hinge shoulder. He swivels at the bicep. He is double jointed at the elbow, although this elbow joint doesn't want to quite bend and I don't want to force it. Uh, this bicep's a little loose. This one's okay. But yeah, he is double jointed, although that bicep joint, or that elbow joint doesn't want to spin. He does swivel and bend at the wrist slightly. I don't know why, but the right one seems to be sitting on there tighter. I might have to check that out at some point, maybe take them off, but it's probably going to be a hassle. So yeah, he has a ball jointed hand, but you're not going to get much play with it because of the gauntlets. He has a ball jointed torso, so he gets a lot of range of movement there. He also encapsulates a swivel. The Brave Shield is on double ball joint, so it is a double ball joint or single? It might just be a single ball joint, which makes the shield be able to bend in and out, swivel, got a lot of range there. He also does have a joint in the ab, which seems to be a ball joint, but it might just be a swivel. And that, no, it's a ball joint, but it has really slight movement. It is a little tassel, or I don't know what these are called on the armor, but they're on hinges, but they're, they're loose, so you can move his leg out and they'll go with it, and they'll go down, so you don't have to worry about posing this and then posing his leg. His front piece does actually lock, and when you move it too far out, it locks in place, but it's also on like a weak hinge, but it holds its spot better than the side plate, so I don't know. Legs on a ball joint go forward, back, and out. They spin at the thigh. He does not have the drop-down joint that other figure arts and D-arts figures have. He is double jointed in the knee. Great range of motion there. No swivel in the boot, but he does have a ball jointed ankle, which, if you can see, his ankle is sticking out, and that does give him better range. But if you don't like that, you can always move his ankle up, and it hides that joint. So it's not like you're stuck with his ankle sticking out that far. That's just to help him with articulation. If you don't like that joint, you can always just move it back up. And it hides. And that ball joint encapsulates rotation, rocker, and hinge. So 
really good. You don't have to have that joint exposed, but at the same time, if you want to, it helps with display. But overall, really nice figure. What I'm going to do now is get him posed and move on to my final thoughts, so we'll wrap up this review. So sit tight, everyone. And so here we have where Greymon posed for my final thoughts, and overall, he's a decent figure. I'm not going to say he's the greatest figure I've ever had the pleasure of dealing with, but he's really good for what he is. He does have... He isn't as articulated as I would have liked him to be. He still has a lot of range of mobility, but there's still some things I wish he had, like probably a better head joint that, that maybe mine is just stuck. Which I really hope is the case, because he's a really nice looking figure. But yeah, he is lacking some articulation that would have made it easier to pose him. And accessories, maybe giving us a flight stand or maybe like two different versions of the Terra Force Burst or something. Just something more than we got with him. I mean, he's a nice looking figure. I just feel he's a little underwhelming for the price tag. And he cost me about $35, I believe it was, on BigBadToyStore.com. Uh, if you want to pick him up, he's still available. Uh, will I recommend him? If you're a Digimon fan, yes. If you're just collecting him because he looks cool, I would be against it. He is he does come from the Agumon family, which is my favorite Digimon, but like I said, he is a little lackluster. Could've been better, but I still like him for what he is. And if you like this video, go ahead and like it, leave a comment, tell me what do you think of War Greymon? Is he a pass? Do these chrome finger tips look nice? Do they look out of place? In my honest opinion, they do look out of place versus the rest of his silver. But anyway, I'm King of Dragons 5000 saying I'll see you guys next time. Take care, everyone.